Hi there, I'm going to show you a real simple jig that you can make for sharpening carbide tip saw blades, everything from skill saw blades, 10 inch table saw blades, and 12 inch chop saw blades. Uh, for 10 inch table saw blades, it's uh, 5 8 arbor. So this is just simply a piece of cold rolled 5 8 steel. If you're going to sharpen 12 inch chop saw blades, the hole in the blades is 1 inch, but the arbor is still 5 eighths. So you just slide the washer over that and bobs your uncle. The main part of this whole jig is that you've got some movement. Really easy to come up with this. The key here is that the whole thing is quite low. Uh, in other words, the ones that I've seen for sale, sharpening jigs that I've seen for sale, they're they're elevated. And as soon as you elevate things, you introduce flex and movement. That's not good. So this is really simple. I've, it's a, a board that's about 10 or 12 inches wide. Uh, let's just quickly measure that. Yeah, it's 11 inches wide. It's just because that's what I had. Piece of, in this case, it's one inch plywood. Nothing fancy. It's sitting on top of, uh, I think it's melamine, whatever it is, it's quite hard. That allows it to wear nicely. And it's just simply clamped between two oak rails. There's no lateral movement. You don't want to have any movement. That's key. You want to have just enough play in this thing that you can go back and forth easily. Okay? I'm using this bronze key as my stop and you'll notice that I've got my 4 inch grinder I'm using a 4 inch diamond disc on here um, you can find these things online delivered to your door for two to five dollars three to five dollars something like that the key is that they're diamond diamond is what grinds carbide and speaking of grinding carbide Carbide contains cobalt. You want to protect yourself from the cobalt dust. Okay? So, we're going to, in this particular case, the way how I've got this configured right now is we're going to grind this edge here. Let me find you here. Right there. We're not grinding this face we will we have to turn the grinder at 90 degrees though to the current configuration we we're going to do this edge out here and to do that um most blades have like a right bevel and a left bevel so the beauty of a simple system like this you take this screw out and you take the one out on the other side and you raise this platform. You don't raise the sliding part, you raise this platform here. This platform is screwed to this hunk of plywood. The whole thing's about 16 inches wide by 2 feet long, roughly speaking. Um, and you just raise this up until you find that bevel angle on the end here, right? And when you're grinding your teeth, you just have to remember, don't grind every single tooth at this one setting, you'll have to alternate, right? Because it's one tooth goes this way, next tooth goes the other way. Sometimes on some blades, the third tooth is at 90 degrees, which is what this current setup is right now. So, when, when you're setting this up, you screw this whole part down to your bottom piece of plywood, and you bring your, your grinder in. I just made these simple clamps with a jigsaw. They firmly hold the grinder. This is the one simple time, the one time where uh, the paddle switch is a useful thought. Otherwise, I find these paddle switches wickedly dangerous. Um, so that's my on trigger, right? Just jam a piece of wood in there and bob your uncle. So now, as you can see, Sort of. Right, you can see that's in there quite snugly. Oops, sorry.
and I'm setting my reference point up in this gullet here. On this type of a saw blade, these gullets are consistent all the way around. The reason why I'm using a bronze T is because on other saw blades, i.e. one like this, let me flip that over, you'll, you'll notice that you've got one, two, three, four, five, and then a deeper gullet, right? So that makes it a little bit harder for your index point. What I do in this particular case for, with saw blades of this type of pattern, I'll grind one tooth and I'll set my T to be the index off of that ground carbide as I'm using bronze. Bronze won't chip the carbide. You can use something else though, whatever, right? What I have found, you know, I've sharpened maybe 25 or 30 blades since I've built this little jig. Uh, you can see here I'm moving it back and forth. You don't need a ton of travel, just a couple of inches. And I'm just showing you here, you don't want this thing moving around, so you got to clamp it down or screw it down your bench, whatever, right? The point is, you you can grind all of your teeth at a 90 degree face on this outside part. I did it just because on this particular blade, you can see, I, I'm angled. I found a screw, and so that just pretty much wrecked the whole blade. However, I've gone back and I've tuned it up, and I found that after I ground all of these things at 90 degrees, that it cuts just fine. It takes a little tiny bit more horsepower instead of the typical alternating bevel tooth, but the point is, with a jig like this, where you've got like a basal platen, you've got your wear surface, and you raise that up, you can come up with that bellow angle. Super simple to do. Okay? So once you've ground... Uh, uh, the one thing I want to mention is, um, you know, after I built this jig, I, I went and referenced YouTube, and most guys, all they're doing is they're grinding this face here, on the tooth, right? This this face is always 90. It's the outside part here that you have the bevels, okay? Most guys don't even bother grinding that outside part, which is fine, but you're going to get a rougher cut out of your blade, and the whole point of sharpening your blade is to not have a rough cut. So, by doing this particular setup, where I am grinding that outside part, and by having a stop, a positive stop, it means I'm leaving a consistent amount behind on my blade. That means I'm getting a smooth cut. So, once I've done that, I turn my grinder, and you'll see I've got a slot cut into my base here. I've got another slot back here. I turn my grinder 90 degrees so that the blade is now 90 and then I come in and I grind this face. Easy peasy. The only thing you gotta pay attention to when you're building your thing, when you're setting it all up, is that you're at 90 degrees, that the blade, your blade that you're sharpening and your grinder your blade from your grinder is at 90. And you can check that with a square. You can see that's 90. Okay? That's the only thing you gotta really watch. Um, that's about it. Real simple. There's no play in this thing. You do get, you know, you can see I've used this jig a bunch of times. That's what this black dust is. Again, you want to protect yourself from that dust, okay? Use appropriate safety gear. I'm not going to bother grinding anything because, well, we've all seen sparks, and this isn't about making sparks. It's about a simple, uh, you know, jig that anyone can build. If you don't have access to a piece of 5-8 stand or cold-rolled steel like this, you can use a wooden dowel, drill your center hole, countersink it, put a saw kerf in it this way, like a narrow saw kerf, 
and then one going 90 degrees going the other way and that way when you tighten your screw down it'll expand a little bit you want to have it so there's no play and you can see I'm, I'm pulling on this thing there's no play and yet I can freely rotate it alright so a couple of key things here is being able to have a positive stop right and in this case because this gullet pattern here is consistent all the way around on the saw blade that's where I'm going and you know when I when I turn my grinder at 90 you know obviously I gotta move my position here so the blade ends up going into well, where's, where's my hole? hole is here, right? that's where my rotational axis is and you can see this will line up with the slot on, right? You can see where the 90 is going to be when I rotate that, when I'm grinding this, when the grinder's sitting at 90 degrees. Okay? Real simple. Takes you about an hour, a couple hours to build a jig like this. Um, would I use my, you know, would I use this jig to sharpen my $200 table saw blades? Probably not. These aren't $200 blades. In Canada, on sale, you can get these blades for about 60 bucks. And for this kind of a jig, perfect. Okay, cheers. Hope this was helpful.